Blue Wave Streamers, welcome to our podcast on our channel. Today we're going to talk about, well, just kind of me, I'm going to talk about uh, the East and the West and the standings that I have predicted for preseason. Now I could be completely and 100% wrong, but hopefully not, but with injuries and everything that happens, trades, teams can be 100% different by halfway during the season or by the end of the season. Uh, I know we haven't done a podcast in a while, kind of didn't start on the NFL like when we should have, but we may make uh, mid-season predictions here soon uh, about uh, who might get a playoff lock and stuff like that, who can be, uh, who's going to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm not a Patriots fan, but they are one of the only undefeated teams left. They're 6-0 and along with the 49ers, who are 5-0. and So... Kind of cool to see only two teams left undefeated out of all 32, and there's some teams that haven't even got a win yet, but you know, you never know, can someone go in 16 again like the Detroit Lions did uh, way back a few years ago, so. But today on the channel, like I said, I'm just going to talk about the East and the West kind of standings, um, talk about the NBA, kind of get it rolling, um, season starts here soon, excited for that, fantasy basketball is going to start up, uh, haven't won in the league I've been in. Every single year, I come like second or third, but I thought last year I was ready to take that jump and be like, all right, I'm going to win, but I didn't, unfortunately, so hopefully this year I can get a dub. But I kind of want to talk about the East first, uh, not because the East is weak this year. The, yeah, I mean, the East definitely got uh, a lot better, along with the West as well, but the West is just so competitive that I just got to talk about the West last. And my favorite player, AD, is in the West on the LA Lakers, playing with LeBron, so... I will definitely get into that and talk about that later, so that's going to be fun. Uh, but first up, kind of, so I did it a little differently. So I have the one through eight player spots, and then I have the nine. Uh, so who's kind of going to be on the bubble or maybe tied, like right there, who is going to push, but, you know, it just isn't going to make it because it's one through eight seeds. So first, I kind of have the Milwaukee Bucks uh, being the first seed uh, with Giannis and the way he, he played last year. You know, I honestly had them going to the finals, but then Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors beat them, and then Kawhi like won the NBA Finals. That, that stuff was crazy. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Like I, I mean, really, really still had the Bucks win all the way that all the way last year, but. Maybe they should go all the way to the finals again. I mean, a lot of people are predicting them, or maybe the 76ers or Celtics, something like that. But Which actually I kind of leads right into my second and third pick. I had the 76ers second. A lot of people aren't too hype about the 76ers. Uh, they did sign Al Horford to a big contract. Um, Joel Embiid, if he can stay healthy. Uh, they did get rid of J.J. Redick. They did re-sign Tobias Harris, though. Um, and that team is like still looking pretty sharp. Um, let's see. Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons, that's who I definitely want to talk about. Ben Simmons is, he has a three-point shot now. He's working it in the offseason, and he pulled one during preseason, and it was a pretty deep three, and so I was like, well, that's a pretty deep three to, like, hit. Uh, but, I mean, that's only one of maybe how many he's going to take in his career. Don't really know yet, uh, but very, very excited to see the 76ers. I mean, because they were competing with the Bucks last year. They were competing with the Raptors. They just, like, weren't there. You know, they're a very young team. Excited to see what they can do. It can Ben Simmons win Rookie of the Year again. Um, and then kind of the Boston Celtics, they not too much really mixed on lineup, just got rid of their point guard. So Kyrie off to the Nets and then whoop, here comes Kimball Walker, which excited to see him out of the Hornets. Uh, they just were not a very good franchise. It just, I mean, I can't tell you last time they made the playoffs. Um, so excited to see Kimba on the Celtics and see how that's going to run to Brad Stevens. Is Gordon Hayward going to step up? How are you developing Jalen Brown? Is Justin Tatum going to keep getting even better? Uh, Ennis Canner, you know, he's now on that team. Uh, you got Taco Fall. Who doesn't want Taco Fall? I mean, freaking excited. Um, everyone's been going crazy for him. So I have, like I said, uh, I'll redo my top three picks. The Bucks were first, the 76ers second, and the Boston Celtics third. Now, my four through six picks, I kind of actually redid them. I first had them in an order, and then I was like, you know, well, wait a second. I don't really know, um, and, I, and I'll tell you why. So, at four, I originally had the Raptors, but I'm going to put the Pacers there instead. And I'm in Indiana, homegrown, always been here. I'm a Hoosier. Um, I've always loved the Pacers. And I know Vic's out right now. You know, he's still coming back from that knee injury that he did. It's later towards the season, so it's going to keep him out towards the beginning of the season. Uh, I'm not actually, we're not even sure when he's going to return back. But the Pacers, you know, they had a great offseason. You know, they had TJ Warren, 
uh, TJ McConnell. You know, we had Michael Michael Brogdon from the Bucks. I mean, that team's looking solid. You know, I think they, you know, they're definitely going to stay above 500. Um, I put them at the four seed because, you know, until Vic returns, you know, I think they're going to be doing steady. And then once he comes back, you know, I think they can really, honestly, if they're not too far behind, they could come and creep in the third seed. But we'll just see when Vic returns. That's going to be the big question mark. And Miles Turner, you know. Uh, he was seven up last year, and I think you know he can continue to do that. Uh, he's looking great. Um, I love him. Uh, had the most led the lead in blocks last year, so that was beautiful, amazing to see. I'm gonna see if he can do it again. Uh, so the fifth, I had the Pacers, which now I have him fourth. Um, I put the Nets there, um, and I put the Nets there because obviously Kevin Durant's not gonna play this year, um, which they would probably definitely be a top three seed if Kevin Durant definitely. Uh, was on the uh, was playing this year, and now Kevin Durant's in the East, so that's pretty cool to see. Like stars are coming to the East, not just going to the West, which is like so awesome to see. Um, but you know that's still a great team though. You got Kyrie, you got Spencer Dinwiddie, Chris Levert's coming back from like the injury they had last year. You have Prince, uh, you have DeAndre Jordan, Jared Allen. Like that's a freaking squad. Like okay, you gave up D'Lo uh, and sent him to the Warriors. The Warriors. Now that's that's a team to talk about. Now right there team to talk about which holy cow um i might need to uh, look at my west standings a little bit because we'll, we'll, we'll actually get into that um uh, but no i mean i think the nets have a great team um you know if Kyrie's in a ball hog you know if they play well you know they have three you know like i said go point guards you can play Chris averted shooting guard spencer what is shooting guard uh one of them you know is coming off the bench um, so I think it's, they're going to be beautiful. I think they're going to play great basketball. Uh, the Nets definitely have a bright future, especially when Kevin Durant comes back, you know, because I don't see Kyrie leaving. Kyrie Irving really leaving anytime soon. Oh, excuse me. And at six, I had the Nets originally, but I'm going to put the Raptors there. So I had the Raptors at four, like I said, and that's because, like, you know, they played so well last year. You know, they had still have Marc Gasol, Serge Ibaka, um, Kyle Lowry just signed. One two year deal of like thirty million dollars, so we'll see, you know how he's gonna play. He actually played really well, um, in the playoffs. You know he didn't have like too many good games to start, but he really showed out, really did well. You know I thought he was definitely on way to, um, maybe win MVP, like MVP, like maybe if like Kawhi Leonard and I got hurt, because how come he had that thirty point game the first game, but then really didn't do anything after that. Kawhi just kind of took over, which I mean, Kawhi deserved to win MVP. Him, I mean he's. Me right now, he's the best player in the NBA. Um, don't at me. I'm just kidding. You know, we can debate. You know, everyone thinks. You know, everyone has different opinions. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my four through six. So I'll kind of restate that: Pacers at four, Nets at five, Raptors at six, and then, like I said, I'm kind of doing the bubble team. So I go through seven through nine right now. Uh, the seven team I didn't. So I didn't change any of these picks. The seven team I have is the Miami Heat. Um, Jimmy Butler went there. It's a great team. I kind of look over there because I have my poster up there. You guys have seen it in past but past podcast. Um, you know their team's still looking sharp. You know, yes, they got Hassan Whiteside, but I think he needed to get out of there anyway. So he wasn't really doing too much for him. Wasn't like really happy. So it's really cool um, to see. You know, Jimmy Butler. You know, he's he's a great player. You know, I thought he was going to do well on the 76ers. I mean, but you just have like a lot of good players. You know, not all all time are all good players going to. You know, played well, play well together. So they were like, "Are, are we going to keep Jimmy? Going to keep Tobias?" And they obviously kept Tobias there, and Jimmy Butler's doing his own thing. So I'm excited to see where he goes there. So I'm the number seven pick. Uh, I think he has a great team, but um, you can't really lead a team by yourself in this like league, especially when we talk about the West. Um, and then the eighth, I have the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, the Atlanta Hawks are very, very young. Uh, Trey Young, uh, great rookie last year. Uh, honestly, probably could have won Rookie of the Year if it wasn't for Luca. Luca, which was my favorite rookie, and I'm glad he won Rookie of the Year. Just seeing ball out, it was it was amazing. Um, but just all the young pieces they have and everything, I think you know, being in the East, you know, it's it's not as hard as the West because like really all the superstars are kind of really in the West. But the East is still gonna be hard this year. But I um, mean, you know, with the rest of the teams, like you know the. Magic, I mean, they have a shot, don't get me wrong. You know, the Hornets, the Cavs, no. The Wizards, not really. John Wall's injured. Uh, the Detroit Pistons, I really don't see him doing much. And then the New York Knicks, which we all know about. Um, and then from a bubble team, I have the Bulls. So, uh, shout out to all the Bulls fans out there. Beagle, uh, everyone that I know. Um, some people had the Bulls making the playoffs this year, and, you know, I could see it. You know, they could replace the Hawks or, say, Jimmy Butler gets hurt on the Heat or something. Like, that's definitely going to, like, decrease their chances. But, 
uh, you know, I think the Bulls are right there. Uh, maybe they can do it. They stay healthy. Everything works out. They could potentially beat the Hawks. So I think the 8th and ninth, you know, that might switch. That's going to be like a really cool, really very competitive. So I'm excited to see that. So I'm just going to run through my East one more time and just tell you what my picks 1 through 9 are. So 1, Bucks, 2, 76ers, 3, Celtics, 4, Pacers, 5, Nets, 6, Raptors, 7, Heat, 8, Hawks, and then 9, the Bulls on the bubble. Now we're going to go to the West uh, Division, uh, well, West Conference. And I can't believe I, wow. Um, like I, I like what I put, don't get me wrong, but like, I didn't put the Warriors in there, and I, I definitely should have. So, actually, one second here as, you know, man, I mean, the West is just so good. It's like the Warriors, like, they should be there. <sighs> A little sad what I just, like, wrote out. But, you know, if that's the case, then, you know, I can definitely see that. You know what? That's just, that's just the way it's going to be. All right. I'll let you guys know what, what I just did here when I get down to my later picks. So, um, this pick might surprise you guys a lot, who I have at first. But I have the Houston Rockets at first. And I say that because the way James Harden played this offense, the way James Harden played last year, he arguably could have won MVP as well. Um, uh, Russell. I don't know why I was freaking his name. But Russell, Russell Westbrook, you know, they played on the OKC, they played on OKC together. Uh, you know, he's won MVP, uh, triple double. He's actually done that the past two or three seasons. So it's pretty crazy to see like, no one's like really doing that right now. And he's doing that. So it's amazing to see, um, you know, their teams, you know, really good. You know, I think they'll be able to play well. I think they'll pass well. Uh, you know, Clint Capella's is down there. I really think they got a good team. So I think they can be number one over all the other Western, uh, conference teams, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, at two, I have the LA Lakers. And, you know, you put AD on there, you know, the LA gave up a lot for him, which I'm glad AD is out of the Pelican organization, but damn, they gave up a lot. Uh, LeBron, Rondo, Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, um, Danny Green, like they have, they have a good squad. Uh, Kyle Kuzma, who's like actually injured right now, excuse me, which I mean, he'll be back. So definitely, you know. You put AD and LeBron on the same team. I mean, LeBron, you know, damn near makes the playoffs every single year. He didn't make it last year, but, you know, injuries and stuff. But not making any excuses. They didn't make it. You know, he got hurt. You know, it is what it is. No excuses out here. Um, but I definitely have them at number two. I think they could be number one, but, you know, I know wrestling kind of comes into play. You know, maybe if AD gets hurt, you know, sometimes he gets hurt every freaking year. Um, you know, I just was kind of said that under my breath. Uh, but at number three, I have the Clippers. So my first three, uh, one through three picks are Rockets, Lakers, Clippers. And I put the Clippers at number three because, like, you know, kind of as I bring in that point, the uh, resting kind of thing, you know, when Kawhi rests, are they still going to be able to play amazing? Like, yes, you have Paul George in there. Like, is Paul George going to be clutch? Like, is he actually going to do, like, what he's, like, what he can, act <sighs> I just, my words get, I'll jump out of and stuff because I love Paul George. You know, he played for the Pacers. He was he was amazing. I loved him. But he just, when it came down to the final shot, like, you got to be able to hit him. You got to be clutch. Um, you know, I think I think he plays great. Um, Dame definitely didn't have a bad shot. Uh, Paul George just didn't contest it. Sorry, buddy. I mean, I'm not just calling you out. Just telling you how it is. I mean, I play basketball myself. Like, I know what a good shot is and wasn't. I mean, he switched it. What do you want to say? Anyways, I think the Clippers are going to play well. They, you know can't name all the players on their team right now, but, you know, Lou Williams, you know, everybody, you know, Pat Bev, you know, I'm just excited to see that, so definitely see them at number three, and then getting to my four through six pick, I had the Trailblazers at four, they added wide side, Narkic is coming back from his broken leg injury, which is like, yeah, yikes, um, you know, Dame, CJ, you know, Narsar Little, you know, it's, it's gonna be an amazing team, I think they were Almost the number one seed last year, like, they were pretty close. I mean, I know they creeped in, like, the two spot, I think. You know, they were definitely hanging around the three spot. So, that's going to be beautiful uh, just to see the Trailblazers work uh, because, you know, Dame, you know, Dane Ballard doesn't want to leave. You know, he's going to be there for probably the rest of his his life. So, we'll see what he can do with that orging organization. Um, the Utah Jazz, I have them at number five. Um, I think the add addition of Mike Conley, you know, you have Joe Ingles, you have Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, Ricky Rubio you got in the offseason. Oh my god, that team's beautiful. It's just the West is so hard that, you know, are they going to clash? Are they going to click? You know, what's going to happen? 
Uh, the Nuggets at number six. I uh, love that team. They were young last year. I definitely could have seen them beating the Trailblazers, uh, but they just didn't because they're young. But you know what? They have one of the best passing big man, big man in the league. I think he's probably number two uh, center uh, in the league right now. Uh, you put AD at power forward center. You put him in center. I put him at number one. So uh, it's just exciting to see like what the Nuggets can do this year. Um, you know, if the playoffs started today, they would play. They play the Clippers, uh, so that would be that would be pretty crazy uh, to see the Nuggets versus the Clippers. I mean, I think Clippers would close out that series. I mean, they should they shouldn't fuck around, but excuse me, language they could. Uh, but the Nuggets, the Nuggets are nice. I'm definitely excited to see where they're going to go. Uh, and Michael Porter Jr. is coming back this year, so you know if he can stay healthy, you know that's going to be a great addition off the bench, uh, or sometimes even when he starts, you know. Uh, and then at number seven, I have the Dallas Mavericks. I I love the Dallas Mavericks. Um, you know, Luca is my favorite rookie. I love to see him. Uh, Porzingis is back from, I want to say, towards ACL last year. Sometimes I forget, like, what injuries they exactly had. So, But it's exciting to see that. Uh, Porzing Porzingis is back. Uh, I mean, I just feel like that team's going to look good. Uh, the team's going to be beautiful. Um, I think they're going to run great ball. Um, you know, Porzingis is going to put up stats. Luca's going to put up stats. Um you know, I have a 7 seed just because, like, the West is so hard, but I can see the maps going up to the 5th seed, you know. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. I can't wait. Uh, I just love basketball so much. I'm just excited to see what teams are going to do. Are they going to disappoint me? Are they actually going to click? You know, what trades are going to go on? Uh, but for kind of like my last playoff spot, um, I originally had the Spurs, and I was like, you know what I'm wrong? You know, I like the Spurs. They got Namar DeRozan. They got Marcus Aldridge, and I'm pretty sure they still have Rudy Gay. Um, and they have the greatest coach in basketball, uh, Greg Popovich. But honestly, I see the Warriors taking him to eighth spot. And the reason I told you I was, I couldn't believe I didn't put the Warriors in here. Um, I just, somehow, somehow I forgot. Don't, I don't know. Um, but like with Clay not being there, I mean, I know Curry's going to go off. D'Lo's going to go off. You know, they still got Draymond. They added Willie Cauley Stein. Oh, my God. Sorry. That might I might have been a little loud. But shout out to Hooper. Um, I know you love the Kings, man. I know you love Willie. Um, I'm excited to see him on the uh, on the Warriors now and see what he can do. Because the Warriors never had like really a true big man center. And to actually see Willie Cauley Stein on there and him developing his game, like I think that's going to be beautiful ball work. Him and Curry going with it. D'Lo. Uh, you know, Draymond, you know, is down there. And then when you bring Clay back, like, oh, man. Like, they could if, depending on where they at before Clay's come back. I think he comes back after the All-Star game, actually, because he shouldn't come back before that because he tore his ACL. So, it'd just be stupid. You're not trying to re-injure yourself. Uh, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Nuggets could fall. The Mavs could, like, can the, like are the Jazz really going to click? You know, that's that's my iffy team in the West. That's my iffy team, the Jazz. How well are they going to click with the addition of Mike Conley? Um... And they also have, is it Ricky? Yeah, they also have Ricky Rubio. So, like, pfft, oh, my God, that's going to be beautiful. Uh, but, like I said, still an iffy team. We'll see how they play. And then for my 19th on the bubbles, I had the Kings originally. Uh, like I said, Hooper, uh, the Kings are well. Yes, I got rid of Willie Collins, starting nice on the Warriors. So, like, I love that. Um, but I would, I could, I could see the Spurs being a nine seed or an eight seed, depending on like what happens here, just cause they have the greatest coach ever, Greg Popovich. Um, so you definitely kicking out the Spurs and that's why I had him at number eight. Like they don't have Tim Duncan anymore. They don't have Dave Robinson. They don't have like the stars, like when they won like chips or whatever, but you know, they have Marcus Aldridge, you know, he was good. He was good on the Trailblazers, you know, he's still doing good. DeRozan, DeRozan is doing well. I think he just needs to work on a jump shot a little bit and he'll uh, be able to play better. I love DeRozan. Shout out to DeRozan. You're one of my favorite players on 2K. You're one of my favorite players to watch and I think you can just take that next step, the next level. And being in the West, like you have to be able to do that, um, which being in the NBA, you have to do that. But in the West, it's just, it's just hard. So honestly, that wraps uh, wraps up my um, picks for the East and the West. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to see what the West can do this year, what the East can do this year, um, and who's like honestly gonna come out of that. Um, maybe on my next podcast, I might talk about um, who could potentially uh, go to the title for the East and the West. Um, so we'll see that. Um, which hopefully, you know, honestly, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just kind of say right now, just to wrap up the video. Um, I think it's going to be the Bucks, and then for the East, for the Eastern Conference, and then I think the, oh, this is just so good. You know what? I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to go with my boy, the Lakers. I think the Lakers can definitely, 
uh, win, win uh, the West, even though I'll have the Rockets at number one. I don't want to be a number one seed to win um, the conference. Uh, so shout out to Rio. I know that you know you love um, LeBron, and he's he's playing good this year. I can't wait to see him and AD just kind of go to work and go at it. Um, it's it's just it's going to be beautiful. So that's all we have time for today. Uh, like I said, don't know when the next podcast is going to be, but just just stay tuned and. Um, like I said, we're going to bring it to NFL probably, say it's like week six right now. So they play 18 games, uh, probably like week nine or something, just kind of make my midseason predictions or whoever else is on the channel. So, all right, folks, have a good one.